Hello friends, this is John Kofer of Gospel of Health and you're watching the two... All right, as you will know, I created a video a few years ago called The 10 Shocking Truths Ignored by the 2520 Movement. Now, since that time, there's been nothing but an increase of excuses and rationalizations of the actual teachings of the various proponents of the 2520 Movement rather than an admission of the clear departure from truth and history that has been perpetrated on Adventists for the last few years. In other words, all these new interpretations or further explanations of things that they explained recently, previously, and now they try to tweak and change a little bit to make it seem more plausible. Are these things amazing grace, new light, and uh, old light becoming clearer, or is it uh, trying to save face? For a number of years, this video has been out and trying to cause people to think deeply upon the foundational principles of this movement. Yet, there's been no real careful, certain, point by point, logical, and even plausible explanation or look at these ten shocking truths, but a multitude of explanations and excuses, and going back to try and, by repeating what they've taught, try to explain what has already been shown to be very questionable. We want to examine that. This video is only going to be mainly a simplified version of our 2520 video. Our 2520 video is almost two hours long. It's about 50 minutes shy of two hours long. This video is going to be very, very small, less than 15 minutes. And it's going to be a simplified form causing you, as you look at some of these principles, to go back and examine the larger video to see even more detail concerning the clear, salient, current points I'll be making in this video. Prayerfully that will help those that are truly desiring to understand the truth see why that video is so important and to this day still exposes clearly how many loopholes and deviations from history, from truth, and from very basic common sense uh, are taken upon by the 2520 movement. Let's get started. When we look at the 2520 movement, and the movement especially promoted by Jeff Pippinger and the proponents of his teachings, we find that there are a number of points on that video that we dealt with that showed point by point by point that something has to be wrong when we look at the way in which this movement is purporting to, one, come here about 160 years after the passing of time in 1844, and announce a tremendous seeming cover-up or discovery of a truth that's been lost sight of or moved away from. An apostasy from the truth took place, according to their understanding of Adventist history, an apostasy from the truth took place, and this apostasy from the truth took place over a hundred and something years ago, and even though we are living in this time of modern technology and Google and research and history and all the accurate records, we're to believe Jeff Pippinger wants to believe, those that follow Jeff Pippinger wants to believe, that even though he makes such certain and, and continual claims, that we must believe that no pioneer wrote, preached, or even in some type of tract form decried publicly this departure from the truth. That no preacher at that time wrote, published, or even in some tract form, sent out a letter or some kind of, uh, of cry against the church and the people that were departing from the truth or from the foundation, which they call it, the 2520 and the various kinder truths they had hold to. Uh, there were no uh, prophetic words showing this departure from the truth. I'll even go forward to say that there were no historians, Elder Lofborough being one of the main ones, who said something about this departure from the faith that had taken place, especially in the year 1863, and has caused a tremendous departure from the foundation, the foundation as they call it, of the faith, the teachings from 1840 to 1844. Are we to believe that Jeff Pippinger in these latter days has come up, and even though no prophet, no pioneer, no preacher, or historian has put out any book or anything in over a century, that in these latter days, 
Jeff Pippinger and his associates have discovered this truth and have discovered this cover up or this apostasy, this shall we call it a quiet storm where this avalanche of apostasy came in and there was no one for over a century or more to speak up and to stand for the foundation of the truth except for Jeff Pippinger. It's very hard to believe such a thing. No historian, even those pioneers that were there, no preacher writing a book, saying something about this departure from faith, no prophetic guidance. It would be a tremendous, as I said in the other video, a tremendous leap of faith into the arms of Jeff Pippinger to believe such a thing, that there was such a open and public and even well written about in the negative against 2520 since this departure as they see it from the faith and no one, no one writes about it, no books, no prophetic lines, no pioneer speaks against it. How much faith are we going to put in Jeff Pippinger to believe that all this happened and the pioneers came together and did this work of creating new charts and so on and removing the 2520 and the church had to wait for more than a century for Jeff Pippinger to come up and to tell us that this actually was not right, even though no one in the church raised any type of alarm, no one had any seeming great problem or published or tried to get back to these foundations until Jeff Pippinger? Or is Jeff Pippinger, as the video states, a revisionist? And those that are trying to defend him and attack those that bring up these points of history, practical common sense and so on, are they supporting revisionists? Which could it be? Which could it be, thinking people? Which could it be? As a matter of fact, we look at a number of quotations, we start to see some things in a different light, especially when we talk about the year 1863 and this gathering together to create the Adventist church. All the pioneers gathered together, Lothborough, James White, they voted to create a new prophetic chart now, Jeff Pippinger would have you believe that the charts that were created in 1843 and so on, that these charts are the only charts that have any validity. Only charts. And that these individuals will gather together in a public way and vote to create a new chart which reflects the faith of Seventh-day Adventists and remove the 2520 and nothing happens. And then also, as they state, they claim, they say, they teach that James White, to some, I guess, the clearest way you could say what they're trying to insinuate is that James White went insane. And in this insanity that took hold of James White, James White created the chart that was voted by all the pioneers, so they're complicit together. But in his insanity, he did this work and wrote an article to try and remove the foundation, which they believe the foundation, and to attack the pillars of our faith. And, and, the prophet of this poor individual who has gone insane also is watching the Review and Herald take up this article written by this poorly insane former pioneer who has done this work of not only creating a chart but also publishing this work of his in the Advent Review where he says over and over that we have come to this agreement which shows the pioneers work in 1863 when they voted together and from this she says nothing. Nothing about the meeting together with the pioneers and their vote, nothing about the work of her poor, as they think, insane husband, nothing about his article and also that Review and Herald would publish such an article and she says absolutely nothing. And Jeff Pippinger and Associates would want us to believe that all this took place and Ellen White said absolutely nothing to defend the foundations that a century later Jeff Pippinger comes up and writes article after article and video after video and his associates write video after video, uh, uh, create video after video and all these various different uh, articles and, and publications to try and defend uh, work that was done that Ellen White didn't mention, didn't speak out, to speak against and she was silent and Jeff Pippinger and all his associates and supporters are standing for the truth in speaking against. Is that another tremendous leap of faith that Jeff Pippinger and his associate preachers and teachers and so-called theologians are 
of greater moral compass than Ellen White and all the varied preachers of that time, that they would have let such a thing happen and let these, these various apostates sweep through the church and say nothing? Let's look at some quotations and see if in some of these quotations we can see exactly what happened in 1863 and what happened at this time and also what Ellen White be silent in such a situation. Let's look at a few quotations. Third Selected Messages, page 38. Think you that my faith in this message will ever waver? Think you that I can remain silent when I see an effort being made to sweep away the foundation, pillars of our faith? I'm as thoroughly established in these truths as it is possible for a person to be. I can never forget the experience I have passed through. God has confirmed my belief by many evidences of His power. The light that I have received, I have written out, and much of it is now shining forth from the printing page. There is throughout my printed works a harmony with my present teaching. Third Selected Messages, page 38. In other words, all that she wrote is in harmony with her present teachings. All that she wrote, all her published works, show exactly what she believed. She did not keep silent when the foundations were attacked. All that were attacked, she spoke of in her published writings. Where is it in 2520 teachings that they show that this is not amazing grace, but attempt to save face? Or right, let's see what Review and Herald, May 26, 1863, had to say. Elder Joseph Bates spoke. He wrote this. Taking a general view of this meeting as a religious gathering, we hardly know what feature of the joyful occasion to notice first. We can say to the readers of the review, think of everything good that has been written of every previous meeting and apply it to this. All this would be true and more than this. Perhaps no previous meeting that we have ever enjoyed was characterized by such unity of feeling and harmony of sentiment. In all the important steps taken at this conference, there was not a dissenting voice. And we may reasonably doubt if there was even a dissenting thought. Such union on such points affords the strongest grounds of hope for the immediate advancement of the cause and its future glorious prosperity and triumph. Joseph Bates, Review and Herald, May 26, 1863. He said there was no dissension among them in every step they made. How did they vote to remove the 2520? And to create a new chart with the 2520 in it and get this chart before all the people if they all were in unity and this meeting was so, so solemn to the point of great unity and blessings. Was all this unity and blessings apostasy or is it only according to Jeff Pippinger? Again, is it amazing grace or is it saving face? Now let's look at the actual statement in the review concerning the vote taken by the pioneers in 1863 concerning this issue. Review and Herald, May 26, 1863. The wording was brief, but the results were far-reaching. Actions were taken relating to the publication of charts for the use in public proclamation of the message, a new prophetic chart, and one on the Ten Commandments. Review and Herald, May 26, 1863. Again, brothers and sisters, they voted with unanimity, without no, with no dissension, to create a new chart, a new chart, and publish this chart publicly for the proclamation of the message which had no 2520. Is it amazing grace that this happened, that these things happened, or is it deception, revisionism, and saving face. Why don't you take a look at 10 shocking truths ignored by the 2520 movement and get a great understanding of what is truth and what is amazing grace.